What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is Monday, so that means it's time for another new comic book day top picks. I'm pretty excited about the small list I have to go over today, but before I ramble too long, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything from the channel. There's not a lot of books on my list this week, um, which was kind of surprising to me because the last couple weeks it seems like comics have really been building back into, um, you know, the distribution that they had been at. And uh, so I have had quite a bit lately, but it looks like this week's going to be a little bit shorter. So let me go through what I got going on here. I guess the biggest book I'm excited about this week is probably We Only Find Them When They're Dead, number three. That's a Boom Studios book written by Al Ewing with art by Simone De Mio. And I've really enjoyed this series so far. It's a very slow build. It reminds me a lot of um, like Avatar The Last Airbender. So if you haven't been paying attention, this is a great book to get caught up only three issues in. But it, it's probably also going to be a great trade read if you just want to wait it out for that. But I'm really enjoying where things are going. And I believe this is going to be a great series when it's all said and done. So I'm excited for number three this week as our story and our characters continue to, to progress and grow. The next book on my list is The Flash, number 765. That's from DC, obviously. Um, it's written by Kevin Shinnick, and uh, the artwork is done by Clayton Henry. Um, honestly, I wasn't... I haven't been very impressed by the last two issues um, since we've changed creative teams, but this is still a great character, and there's um, you know there's a lot of themes and um, style that's been carried over, so it's not a terrible read, and I'm hoping that what we're building toward is something that will be just as great as what we were getting before. But either way, I've been reading The Flash long enough. I'm not gonna drop it immediately like that. So I am excited to check this out and see what happens with uh, Dr. Alchemy in this next issue. The recount number one is from Scout. And this is actually a book that I've had on my list for a while. Um, I heard an interview with uh, the creator, Jonathan Hedrick. And um, it's a really cool concept. I can see how it's pretty obviously politically divisive and that is uh, something that is going on in uh, the United States here right now. So I wouldn't blame anybody for staying away from this book um, because essentially what happens is the president of the United States is assassinated, um, I believe by a secret service agent in fact. And um, the fallout of that is kind of where the story is taking place. They decide to focus their attention on all the people that helped put this president in power. And so it kind of starts to create this like very divided civil war style America. And the vice president was not assassinated. So he's kind of trying to take over the office of the president as he would be expected to. And keep the country from completely falling apart. Um, like I said, I know this hits a little close to home, especially right now with everything that's going on and the potential for what is to come in the future with uh, where we're at in our current um, social crisis, I would say. But um, I don't know. This book has been on my radar for quite a while. Um, I heard that interview, I don't know, probably three or four months ago. It just sounds really cool, like a really great concept. Um, obviously, I hope it's not a reality. I hope we don't go down this path. Um, but I think that's also um, what comic books and storytelling is great for is exploring the potential possibilities, um, not in hopes that we go toward or away from them, but in regards to providing that kind of awareness, you know, like I'm a big believer, even if there's only a 5% chance, we should be acknowledge that that is a possibility, you know, and so um, yeah, for me, this kind of hits home. On a whole lot of different levels but i'm really excited to see what this book is all about and uh you know see what what really goes down and uh how this uh this creative team kind of plays out the events that take place within the pages that's about all for regular issues this week um the one other floppy issue i want to point out is obviously 
Power Rangers number one. That's, I mean, that's going to be the big book of the week for me, obviously. Um, I think this book is going to be great. I really like what they did with Mighty Morphin number one, um, which was kind of the first half of this relaunch. Um, and as I've gone through Power Rangers and stuff, I've really been excited for um, the sci-fi and the Omega Ranger stuff. So um, I'm excited to see where Power Rangers number one is going to go. But I don't want to talk too much about it right now, right here, because one, I want to read it so I can really talk about it. But secondly, we're going to be having a special episode of Powered Up Comic Reviews this Thursday around 9 o'clock Central Time. It is uh, Burke, or as most people probably refer to him, Steve. It is his birthday. He will be working late. He has quite a few uh, work obligations going on. So we're not going to be on our regular schedule. We're not going to do the 8 o'clock thing. Um, but it looks like we are going to be trying to hit a little closer to 9 o'clock. The only book we're really going to focus on at this point is Power Rangers number one because we're all very excited for this one. And it's also his birthday. So don't forget to show up and show out and let him know uh, how excited you are because I hear he's going to be like 40 years old. So, you know, don't tell him I told you, but make sure you let him know. Okay, and then to cap it off, there's a couple of trade paperbacks and uh, graphic novels coming out that I do want to highlight. So Alienated, the trade paperback, is finally going to drop. This is from Boom Studios, written by Simon Spurrier, and uh, the art is by Chris Wild Goose. I read this entire series as it was released. I really liked it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, you know, I usually pick up the trade paperback of any of these, like, miniseries and stuff that I really enjoy. So I'm definitely going to grab this one. I'm going to go ahead and warn you, there is a little bit of maggot bashing in here. So if, uh, you know, if that's your political leaning, it's probably not going to hit for you. However, I will also say that it comes full circle and the moral of the story actually incorporates this idea that like we need to be less divided and come together more. And it plays out in an amazing way. Um, if you like 13 Reasons Why or um, Chronicle or anything of that nature. That's essentially what's going on here. But the way that they use the comic book format and um, the way that they do the style, the colors, everything about this book hits on so many great levels. It's a really great story. I wish it didn't get a little too bogged down in some of the political divisiveness of the country. But this is the world we live in and we're going to have to accept that that's part of what we're going to see right now especially with all the elections and all the turmoil we're going through at the moment. But at the end of the day, Alienated is a great book. It's a really good story. And I think if you can look past some of the things that are in there, then um, it's, it's a great read that I think will really, you know, strike some heartstrings and, and really make you think about the world we're in. And um, I would say not so much what we can do about right now, but it definitely makes me think about the future of the country that I want to shape for my kids to grow up and grow into, you know. So um, it's a great book. I really liked it. I enjoyed all five or six issues of it. And I cannot wait to grab the trade paperback and read through it all again. Under, Air <clears throat> Under Earth is a graphic novel from IDW. It's written and illustrated by Chris Gooch. I'm not really familiar with uh, his work or um, what he's done in the past, but this book, I really like the cover. I like the concept. It's basically about like a underground prison that was created from a, um, I guess like an abandoned landfill. And so they have like this underground prison and an old landfill. So there's all kinds of um, old iPhones and Game Boys and like all the stuff that we throw out that we probably really shouldn't. It's all down here, so you got like this prison drama playing out with a lot of like really neat plays on, um, you know, some of the utility we see in like these prison dramas where they're making knives out of toilet paper and all that kind of stuff. Well, now we're going to get to see that, but done in this from the aspect of like the garbage from our modern lives, you know. So what if prisoners could find old beat up iPhones and iPods and Game Boys and technology and stuff like that and how would that help them and what kind of skills would they apply to that it sounds really cool it sounds really interesting and it is a graphic novel so um you're talking about one book one story beginning to end no breaks 
it's a really great format to read a story in and so i'm excited to check this one out because it sounds really really interesting to me and the last book on my list here is we will or uh will destroy galaxy for cash this is another graphic novel it's from dark horse and this one's done by yahtzee croshaw who is uh doing the writing and the artwork once again and um this is basically in in a world where we have the ability to travel through space and everything say like like in a star trek or a star wars type uh world you know where you could just travel from place to place that is changing once again where before there was like warp drives and so you still had to travel but you could travel fast enough and things like that they've now invented basically teleporters so they're, they're putting like a whole section of the population out of business imagine if like we could suddenly teleport from our home to work well now like uber and lyft and cab drivers and car companies and you know all of that stuff train companies airplane like they're all going to start to struggle and go out of business and so that's kind of what this is the uh the play here being that it takes place in a universe and a galaxy and um so basically we have a freelancer that's willing to do whatever it takes to make some money and pay his bills and that comes through in the title will destroy galaxy for cash Pretty excited about that one too. I think the graphic novel format is uh, getting bigger and bigger. And I think it's a great way to read a story because you get introduced to this character. You get a wrap on the story. Um, there's no page breaks. It makes for just like a really great way to read a book and uh, or read a story, you know. Um, and so I'm excited for that. And uh, this one looks really cool. It's from Dark Horse Comics. And I'm excited to check that out. So I've kind of touched on a lot of things here. Um, obviously, politics seems to be dominating um, our lives in a certain sense. Um, you know, there's so many books here that have so many like political undertones and stuff right now. It's unfortunate. It's been like a whole year of a week <laughs> this past week. Things have been crazy. Um, you know, I'm very envious of anybody outside of the United States right now. If you're watching from England or something like I'm glad we were finally able to turn some things around and look a little bit better in the world view, but um, I am very jealous that you live in a country where you are not dealing with some of these problems right now. And um, at the end of the day, comic books are for escapism, and so I try to look past all of that and look at like what the heart of the story is. I think Alienated is a book that has the potential to very much like be uh, you know divisive and magnetize and polarize people but at the same time like there's a very minimal amount of politics in that um, or political rhetoric I guess and so I really hope everybody else can look past that and see how great of a story it really is and how it all comes back around you know um, the recount I feel like that one's gonna be pretty obviously political it sounds like it's probably going to align more with my political leanings. So if you are kind of on the same side as me, you'll probably enjoy that book. If not, you might have some issues with it. So stay away from it. Um, we only find them when they're dead. The Flash, Power Rangers, those are all going to be great books. We all know what to expect there. That's going to be good stuff. So I'm excited for this week, even if I'm only picking up a handful of books. I hope that you guys are out there grabbing some of your favorite content as well. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you're excited for any of these books. Let me know what books aren't on my list that you're excited for. And more importantly, let me know why I should be excited for them. Because there's so many great comic books out there. I can only tell you what catches my eye. And um, I hope that everybody else can let me know what's catching their eye. So until next time, keep flipping pages.